the Lord said to Joshua today, this is so important. Then the Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. My God, I need to say that again. God says today I have rolled away the reproach from your past off of you. You didn't hear what I said. God says today I have rolled away the reproach of your history from you. Hallelujah. Today, I have rolled it away. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very, everybody say that very day. That very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. Verse 12 says, the manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year, they ate of the produce of Canaan. Wow. The day after the manna stopped, oh God. And there was no longer any manna for the children of Israel or the Israelites. But that year, they ate from the blessings of the promised land. I want to talk today about the day the manna ceased. Tell somebody, no more manna. No more manna. And if I use a subtopic, the subtopic is living in the land of promise. Learn how to walk and live in your place of promise because there will be no more manna. Shout hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, praise and worship. You have done a phenomenal job. Let's bless the Lord for our praise and worship and our musicians. Uh, these young people are worshipers. They do it because they love the Lord. Uh, when I last spoke to you, and I need to uh, recap because you know been a part of this church for any period of time you know that the manner in which I minister uh, is one thing must be connected to the next thing and the next thing they aren't arbitrary thoughts uh, the Lord has given me I don't preach sermons I deliver messages and, and I try to teach lessons that will uh, over a period of time bring about some change in your life so I got to go back almost really a month and kind of bring you back to where we are uh, see what God is doing because some of the things I talked about a month ago are happening today. Amen? Some of those things are already beginning to happen and for many more of you they will continue to, to happen. But when I last spoke to you, I told you that God is going to do something amazing in your life. How many remember that? Then the Lord changed. The Lord then changed it and said, no, he is doing something amazing in your life. Now how many of you can testify to that? So this morning, I want to tell you again, in case you forgot, that the amazing things have begun. The shift has occurred. The moment has arrived. The old is no more. The way it was is not the way it is or will ever be. Nothing will ever be the same. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. I'm going to say it again. Nothing will ever be the same of your environment, of your life, of your existence, of your friends, of ev even your bank account's not going to be the same. Somebody better shout hallelujah. Amen. Get used to the bill collectors not calling you. Get, get used to Y'all hear what I'm saying? Get used to not having to juggle funds and rob Peter to pay a Paul. Get used to being able to pay your bills on time. And get used to not making so many bills. That's the first thing. It has begun. The struggle, I said this to you before, and I'm going to say it again. This is all repeat this part. The struggle of not enough has come to an end. And the struggle of more than enough has begun. Touch somebody and tell them, said, I'm struggling with my more than enough. 
I got more anointing, more power. I got so much joy, I got to give you some. I got so much peace of mind, I got to pass on to other folk and tell them the peace of God, which pass of all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ. I got so much, I got to give some of this away. Struggling with how to live in this place. How do I dwell in this place? This place is foreign to me, but I like it. I've grown to know what it's like to struggle over what I don't have and what I can't do. How many of you know a thing called worry? Worry. How many of you know a thing called fear? A thing called pain, lack, want, hurt, disappointment. How many of you know broke? Friends with broke? You know broke? Amen. You need to sever that relationship. You need to sever that relationship with broke. And you know broke. And you know I can't take it anymore. How many of you know I can't take it anymore? Guess what? You took it and you're still here. I guess you didn't hear what I said. All of us that said, I didn't say you because I'm included in this one. All of us who have said, I can't take it anymore. Guess what? We took it and we're still here. Ready to take some more. It just won't be what it was before. Now, I hope somebody hear what I'm trying to tell you today. We know I can't take it anymore, but I'm here to tell you and I'm so glad that there is a place in this God that we serve where none of the things that I just mentioned exist. It's called the land or the place of God's kept promises. Living in the land of promise, the place of God's kept promises. It's a place where I know trust instead of worry. I know faith instead of fear. I know praise instead of pain. And I know plenty instead of lack. This is the place called God's kept promises. It's the place where amazing things seem to happen almost every day of my life. And I make them amazing. Just the fact that I wake up and breathe and it can raise my hand and say, thank you, Jesus, is amazing. Get up and wash your face. Don't have to have somebody help you. It's amazing. Get up and be able to feed yourself. It's amazing. Be able to put the fork in your mouth and eat that food and digest it. Because there's some people sipping out of straws. And y'all not here when I'm getting fed individually. But the mere fact that you can get up, put on your clothes. Get up, go out the door and go to work. Do whatever you got. It's amazing. My God. As a matter of fact, when we consider your life and consider where you've been and what you've done. And the fact that not one of us in here deserves the goodness of God. The fact that I can still breathe, eat, sleep, go to clothes, put my clothes on, drive my car, wash my clothes. Y'all not here. It's amazing. I can get up. I can watch TV. I can hear it. I can hear the radio. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. I can still walk and talk. And the fact that I'm still here can still do that is amazing. So every single day of my life, something amazing is occurring. Somebody better bless him on that one right there. I shall take all you on my side. My God, my God. That's the place. This is the time that we've entered into it. We have moved this church, every one of you in here today. Some of you, I'm talking about what you have done, and some of you, I'm talking about what you will do. But I'm putting it in a past tense as if it's already done. Understand what I'm saying and what I'm doing. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So I'm prophesying things over your life, even though you've not yet seen the manifestation. And because